the meniscus actually is not, now I've broke this now, the meniscus itself is actually quite mobile, so they move anterior with extension. So as I go into extension, they're going to come forward because our load in the knee is anteriorly placed. As we go into flexion, our menisci come backwards posteriorly, as does our load across the tibia, or if you imagine it, onto the posterior condyles of the femur. So they're only fixed at the roots, and so you can imagine that they're two floating C's. Okay? So there's a root at the front, the anterior root, and at the posterior. So if you injure your meniscus, you then lose, when we load down, because it gets stuck on those structures, the entire ring is important. So if you push, it changes the properties of the cushioning and the sort of support structure that has there. So any meniscus tear is really important and you need to consider where is it and in what morphology. The medial meniscus actually attaches to the medial collateral ligament and therefore it can change its movement patterns if there's an injury to that. There's also at the back semimembranosis and the popliteal muscle. Um, provide posterior support so it doesn't extrude backwards. The lateral meniscus floats more and therefore it's less often injured as you're aware especially with crunching movements because it can get out of the way and the lateral collateral doesn't actually connect to it. Um, so you need to know what normal is for a demographic. Below the age of 50 the, 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 the tear uh, or sorry a normal knee or your chances of finding a meniscal tear is about 15%. Between 50 and 60, you go up to one in four, so 25%, 60 to 70, 35%, and above 70, it's at least 45%. So if you're scanning in a slightly older population, you need to tell this individual before going in, hey, we've got a 45% chance of seeing a meniscus tear here. Um, so if we see it and we don't think it's clinically relevant, let's not worry too much. We can see that the peripheral zone here on the outside has actually got a blood supply, but that only extends through about a third of the men meniscus. So if you get a tear out here in the white region, red region, white region, it's unlikely to actually heal. And so then it becomes, is it mechanically compromising the knee and how do we manage that? Often, if you can get the patient with pain relief as their mainstay, you can actually autoclave your own injuries and shave it off to a stable margin. You don't need an operation. And here, you might be more aggressive with your unloading in the red zone because you've got blood supply and they're painful because you've got more nerve supply, but because they'll heal and they will actually scar up. Um, human superglue. As we mentioned here on this medial side, the anterior horn is more anteriorly placed than on the lateral side. So when you're going through with your sag tools, looking either at the axials or coming through your coronals, you need to know your anatomy um, and thinking about what attaches to it. Realistically, it's got a very strong relationship, both of them, to the ACL and PCL. So some examples. I'll, this is where I want you to gaze to the lateral knee. And this is a discoid meniscus. Roughly 3% of the population will have this. And what we see on the MRI is that we usually get the bow tie effect that we spoke about there. And you need to get used to looking at that when MRI. But here, there's a huge whopping meniscus. They've got a common cause of mechanical knee pain, especially in the adolescent that's starting to engage in more sports because it's more prone to tearing. Because you've got more meniscus with which you can grab and twist. Much like the cartilage analogy, it's the grabbing and twisting that will often get these injuries. 